This video is evil and not suitable for the faint of hearts. So if you don't like to see bloodshed on the board, my man, in the words of Beyonce, to the left, to the left. <laughs> Again, I'm going to show you how to play the intercontinental ballistic missile gambit against every common opening that your opponent plays. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Let's go. Right, so let the war begin. I'm playing against a 2161 rated opponent and I'm planning to play the reverse tennis on gambit if white plays c4. Yep, I knew this because of my opponent's rating. They like playing pawn to c4 on the first move. So now it's time to go d6, e5, and knight g5, starting with e5 first. So this is simply the Budapest defense, guys, and it can be another way to play the reverse tennis on gambit. For example, pawn to d6 is not the main line in the Budapest. There we see pawn to b3. I'm waiting for white to play h3. So let me give him one more chance to make a mistake by going pawn to f6 first. Yep, cause f6 will kind of force white to take on d6, which is what I want. So I want white to take on d6 after which I'm gonna take back with my bishop and then anyway. So I'm waiting for e takes d6 after which I'm gonna take back with my dark squad bishop and this will probably turn into the tennis on if white plays bishop b2. I'm gonna suck my knight on f2. Just remove bishop takes d6. Great, so now if bishop b2 or h3, wow, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about you guys. So I just sacrificed my knight on f2, double attacking the queen and the rook, next, yeah king takes, next I want to go bishop g, bishop g3 check and then win the queen on d1. So this, and my opponent just resigned, just like that. This is the reverse tennis on gambit you guys, and this is how you play it. When you're having black pieces so let me just show you the way we play this if white tries to be a bit more solid so instead of what we saw the game usually starts with pawn to d4 on the first move and then you go knight to f6 and then they play c4 you go pawn to e5 the budapest defense after they take you go knight g5 knight to f3 and then this is when you play d6 hoping them to take because after all, that's the top plate move, by the way. No jokes, you can check the leeches database. So e takes d6 is what most people play in this position, after which you take back with your bishop. And then, all of a the sudden, they play pawn to h3. And now this is when you can shock them by sacrificing your knight on f2. And after the king takes, you simply go bishop g3 check, or even bishop c5, it doesn't matter. But in this case, just to simplify things, just go bishop g3 check, and on the next move you are going to win a free queen on d1 just like what you do in the normal tennis on gambit with white pieces so now let me show you how to play the tennis on gambit just in case you don't know what the tennis on gambit is so this is where we just start with knight to f3 and after d5 e4 pawn takes we go knight g5 counter attacking the pawn and after knight f6 we go d3 pawn takes bishop takes d3 and after pawn h6 we go knight takes f7 king takes bishop g6 check and then win black queen on d8 like this so this is how we play the tennis on gambit with white pieces and that's what I did with black pieces in the Budapest so now it's time to play the next game and see what my opponent is going to do now with white pieces by the way so let's go and remember to hit the like button subscribe if you like what you're seeing right now and share this video if you can you guys because that's how we grow this community also check out my free e5 defense course which we are still building with my team it's free with a tiny token of appreciation for research let's go right now with white pieces i'm playing against a 2179 rated opponent okay now he played some kind of the sicilian transposition it's like the game started with e4 and then black played c5 and after knight to f3 they then play pawn to d5 and that's the position that you are seeing on the board right now it started as a zuka tot opening but transposed into the sicilian so what i like doing is going pawn to d3 here allowing them to take on e4 so that i can go knight g5 yep so knight g5 now if pawn takes i'm gonna take back with my light squad bishop yep Everything working according to plan. If h6, I'll take on f7. 
okay there we see knight c6 so i wanted to sack my knight on f7 so there's no sacrifice with knight c6 right because the queen's knight is protecting black's queen on d8 so there's no knight takes f7 sacrifice and you should be very careful you guys whenever you see knight c6 by black so it's time to reset my brain and play knight c3 the idea is to go knight g e4 in case of pawn to h6 and i also had an opportunity to take on h7 so knight to f6 now i can just cast a shot i think putting my king to safety because what else do i know apart from this so h6 now i can play knight g e4 that was the purpose of playing knight c3 on the previous move so knight g e4 is the way to go just protecting my knight okay so knight takes knight takes simple stuff e6 and now i think let me go bishop e3 putting more pressure on the c5 pawn okay b6 by black i like developing my queen at this stage of the game or maybe yeah queen f3 first before playing bishop b5 i'm just trying to put more pressure on the c6 knight so now i think i can go bishop b5 is it yep bishop b5 just putting more pressure on the c6 knight together with my queen okay so that's a mistake knight e5 is a mistake by black i have knight f6 check and then win oh bishop takes first and then if queen takes i have knight e5 check sorry knight f6 check and then win the rook on a8 okay so there we see queen takes d7 now knight f6 check if pawn takes i'll take the rook on a8 with check so you will see all these tactics appearing on the board once you play the tennis on gambit correctly and you guys maybe you can do me a favor just for today <laughs> you know what just call me the master of the tennis on gambit i don't mind and I know I sound a little bit bragging, but no, it is what it is. So let's see what my opponent is going to do against my tennis on gambit. Okay, there we see castle shot by black. That was just a free pawn. Okay, so rook e8. Now rook e8. What can I even do? Queen, queen a4. The plan is to shift my queen to the king side for a quick checkmate mm -hmm. or maybe queen h4 in the near future okay queen b8 by black i guess now i can play wait a second this is a blunder because now i can take the dark sword bishop and win the rook on ea so rook takes <laughs> so this is what i'm talking about you guys if you play very good chess it's not you who is going to checkmate your opponent it's actually them who are going to make a mistake or blunder so in this case my opponent just blundered with that move queen b8 okay that's a clever move b5 what can i do here or maybe i could just play queen h4 queen h4 with an intention of mating not worrying about my rook yep so queen takes d6 now or maybe i can first of all go queen g3 check directly and then mate on g7 or win the queen like this so queen takes d6 king h7 bishop e3 okay so black is now down a queen a full queen by the way and i'm still eating his bones so this is just a matter of me finding the right way to kill my opponent it's just a matter of technique the game is almost over or already over <laughs> oh but i'm low on time maybe my opponent may win on time so i need to be very fast and the key here when you are down on time is to trade pieces so i just want to find a way of trading all of black's pieces If need be up taking the knight so now i have to promote that pawn i don't mind losing my bishop cut the line four seconds okay now this is easy Oh 
one second. Okay, all right, so this is bicycle mate. Yep, <laughs> right, good, congrats. No time for analysis. Let's go straight into another game. By the way, if you want to know how to play the tennis on Gambit very well like this, simply watch the tutorial video that I have linked in the comment section down below. It's also on my second channel, you guys. Be sure to support that channel as well. It's called Casper Chess Clips, where I post some of the most exciting clips from my original videos. And I also feature in other new videos as well. So let's go to another game. Thank you. Right, now I'm playing against a 22 60 rated opponent, higher rated, right? So knight to f3, knight f6. Let me go pawn to d3. This is what I like doing against knight to f6. So expect to see d5 after which I'm going to play e4, d5, e4. Let's see. Yes. So e4 now, how did I know this? Cause I have played this several times and so I kind of know the psychology behind these moves, you guys. And look at this, out of all my opponents, it is my higher rated opponent who walked right into this trap. Wow. So it turns out that most lower rated players know these traps very well, unlike these higher rated players. Maybe because higher rated players think they know it all. And if black plays knight c6, I'll play queen d3 check, go queen g3 check, and then that's when I'll take the c7 pawn. There's a reason why we do that, to avoid our queen getting trapped after bishop f5, obviously. And there we see knight c6. Again, the idea is queen d3 check, queen g3 check, and queen takes c7. Why is queen takes c7 a blunder in this position? Well, because black can play pawn to e5 and knight e8 or knight d5 to trap the queen. So queen d3 check first and then queen g3 check. Yeah. So bishop f5 now queen g3 check. And this is when we win that pawn on c7. So queen takes c7 and boom, just like that, you learned one new thing today. Ha. So I'm still wondering how a fully grown bearded man managed to walk into this trap. My God, what's wrong with this generation? Uh, sorry guys, don't take it too personal. Here at Casper Chess, we like jokes. And uh, probably that was a bad joke. I don't know if my opponent has a beard or not. So don't take offense. Uh, this time, white played knight d4, intending to capture my pawn on c2. And I should do something about this. I'm thinking, should I go bishop f4, knight a3? Yep, protecting my c2 pawn first. Of course, I couldn't protect my pawn with my fingers or my toes. Okay, so there we see pawn to e6. I think it's high time I go bishop. Okay, so black wants to take my knight, right? And next, they want to take my rook. So castle shot first, securing my king so that there is no king folk. And now I don't have to worry about knight takes c2. There we see bishop takes a3, just like I anticipated. And next, knight takes c2. Thank you, I have rook a b1 now. Okay, so my rook is now safe. b6, b6 I think I should now develop my bishop or, first of all, play bishop b2 to put more pressure on the f6 knight, yep. So this is how we make plans. By the way, even if you are up a queen in the tennis on gambit, you still have to work for your meal. You are not guaranteed to win automatically because black will always be up a minor piece or up a major piece. So you still have to work for your meal. There we see knight d5. Knight d5, I think let me resign. No, let me go queen e5, intending to mate on g7. <laughs> anyway, why am I like this? <sighs> Crazy me. Anyways, I'm sure black would do something about that. Probably knight back to f6. Because what else? 
or maybe rook c7. I don't know. I'm not a sangoma. I don't use juju. And I'm not a voodoo priest. Ah, oh, knight back to f6. So now I can play something like rook fd1 or rook bd1. Because rook c1 will run into rook c5. Yep. Rook d1. So rook bd1. Okay, anyways, rook c5 comes. But I have uh something like... I think let me just retreat my queen back to g3. So the target is the g7 square. If the knight goes away, I'll mate there. And I also have plans to go rook d7. If knight takes, I have queen takes g7 checkmate, supported by my dark squad bishop. And this is what we mean by great peace coordination, you guys. Attacking indirectly. So if knight d7 or rook b5, I'll simply checkmate on g7. So rook d7 will be a very nice deflection. There we see rook g8 by black. What a second, but I can still take on f6, right? That's a mistake because, yeah, bishop takes. Yeah, if pawn takes, I have rook d7 check. I still have that move and am I winning or was that a blunder? King h8, what should I do now? <laughs> Maybe queen h4. I think queen h4. Yeah, queen h4 attacking two spots. Ah, oh, but black has rook g6. God, did I just mess up things? Or, or maybe I should still continue. Rook f4. Turning to mate that side. On b8. Ah, oh, okay. I think let me just connect my rooks. Rook fd1 now. Still trying to find a way of simplifying this game. Okay, rook cg8 calls for pawn to g3. Black wanted to take on g2. Now I should do something here. So knight takes a3 by black. And now I'm thinking of taking on a7 with my rook. But there is knight b5. That's the problem. Even knight c7 will run into knight b5. So let me just play rook. Yeah, rook b7. Rook b7, there's no knight b5 attack. Unless my rook was on c7 or on a7. And next I'm planning to go rook d d7. Let's see what my opponent is up to. So you see, even if you win your opponent's queen, it's not that easy to convert. So rook d d7, intending to mate on a7. Yep. So I'm planning to mate on a7. How can I mate on a7? Oh, the only piece guarding the a7 square is the bishop. Sorry, the bishop. So, uh, yeah, so I can get rid of the bishop. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy, you guys. So just play your chess very well and... Okay, my opponent just resigned. Just play your chess very well and tactics will begin showing up on the board. You don't even have to stress. Your opponent will blunder in one way or another. Just play active chess, you guys. This was one of my best games during uh, these live streams, I guess. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And remember to check out my E5 defense course, which is free at the moment. And which we are still working on with my team. So I hope you had a good time watching this video. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.